Good evening, everyone. Today we'll be discussing the role of ultrasound in evaluation of first trimester pregnancies in the acute setting. Myself, Dr. Saksham Jain, second year resident in Department of Radio Diagnosis at Dr. D. Y. Patil Medical College Hospital and Research Center, Pune, and I am doing this oral paper under the guidance of Professor Dr. Parag Patil. The aims and objective of the study. In patients presenting for an evaluation of pregnancy in first trimester, the transvaginal ultrasound is a modality of choice for establishing the presence of intrauterine pregnancy, evaluating viability, gestational age, multiplicity, and detecting any pregnancy-related complications and diagnosing ectopic pregnancies. In this article, we'll be discussing the sonographic appearance of the normal intrauterine gestation and the most common com complications in the first trimester in the acute setting. The first semester of the pregnancy consists of the first 12 to 13 weeks calculated as the uh, calculated as beginning on the first date of last menstrual period. During the first semester, uh, transvaginal ultrasonography is the imaging modality of choice for both diagnosis and imaging follow-up. The advantages of ultrasound, ultrasound includes widespread availability, relatively low cost and acquisition and acquisition of real-time and high-resolution images. The initial diagnosis of pregnancy is usually made by identifying the presence of serum beta. Uh, serum beta SCG or a urine beta SCG levels. Ultrasound is then utilized in first and second trimesters to establish gestational age, viability, and evalu eventually evaluating fetal anatomy. Uh, in first semester, pelvic ultrasound is employed to establish presence or absence of the intrauterine gestational sac and to evaluate the viability of the pregnancy. In addition, it can be used to evaluate ectopic pregnancy and other pregnancy-related complications. So this was a prospective study done at Dr. Deva Patil Medical College Hospital and Resource Center, Tertiary Care Teaching Hospital. 50 women who attended the OPD with complaints of bleeding per vagina uh, were taken a detailed history and a complete general and physical examination was done to arrive as a clinical diagnosis. After that, the patient would undergo an ultrasound examination. Both the clinical and ultrasound diagnosis were then correlated. Gestational age is initially calculated from the first day of the LMP. Ovulation typically occurs mid-cycle at about day 14 of the menstrual cycle, at which point fertilization is most likely to occur. Thus, by the time of the first menstrual period, fertilization and implantation of the fertilized womb have occurred. During the first three weeks uh, following conception, the developing gestational sac is below the limit of detection by the transvaginal ultrasound. The growth rate of gestational sac is approximately 1.1 mm per day, and the gestational sac first become a apparent on TVS at approximately 4.5 to 5 weeks of gestational sac, gesta gestational age appearing as a round and echoic structure located eccentrically within the echogenic decidua. So these are the various timelines for the developmental milestone. The most important being the 4.5 to 5 weeks, the appearance of gestational sac. Then the 6 weeks, cardiac pulsations. 7 to 8 weeks, fetal spine. And 8 to 10 weeks, hindbrain or round encephalon. Subsequent to the appearance of gestational sac, two concentric ecogenic lines encircling the central ecogenic uh, collection develops. The outer ring is called the decidua peritalis, while the inner ring represents the decidua capsularis and the chorea. This is known as the double decidual sac sign, which is definitely is the definitive sign of intrauterine pregnancy. Gestational sac size is measured in three dimensions, and the mean sac diameter is used to help estimate the early gestational age. Yolk sac appear as a circular, thick-walled ecogenic structure with an anechoic center within the gestational sac, but outside the amniotic membrane. When at 5 to 5.5 weeks, it can sometimes be seen as a two parallel lines rather than a discrete circle. Embryo, the embryo, sometimes referred to as a fetal pole early on, becomes apparent at 6 weeks of gestation and is as a relatively featureless ecogenic linear or oval structure adjacent to the yolk sac, initially measuring 1, one to 2 mm in length. At this point, the mean sac diameter is approximately 10 mm. The crown rump length is measurement between the cranial and caudal ends of the embryo and is the most accurate measure of the gestational age in the first semester. The CRL gradually increases measuring 10 mm at 7 weeks and the lack of vis visible embryo on TVS once the mean sac diameter reaches 25 mm is the diagnostic of pregnancy failure. While fetal pole begins as a featureless structure, some fetal anatomic structures become visible as the first semester progress. As I first told, the spine becomes evident at 7 to 8 weeks and the hindbrain becomes evident at 8 to 10 weeks.
an amniotic membrane becomes visible around seven weeks, and the CRL closely corresponds to the amniotic sac diameter between 6.5 and 10 weeks of gestation. After the fetal urine production commences at about 10 weeks, there is a disproportionate enlargement in the amniotic sac relative to the chorion cavity. The chorion and amniotic fuse after the first semester 14 to 16 weeks. This is a TVS in a patient with previously confirmed intrauterine pregnancy and vaginal bleeding, showing an intrauterine pregnancy with a fetal pole marked by an arrow head. A curvilinear ecogenic membrane is noted around the embryo corresponding to the amniotic membrane. The cardiac activity is seen as early as six weeks of gestation when the embryo is 1 to 2 mm in size. The current guidelines of the Society of Radiologists in Ultrasound just establish a CRL cutoff of 7 mm above which one should definitely visualize fetal cardiac activity. The absence of a de uh, detectable heartbeat once the embryo measures greater than 7 mm is, then is diagnostic of pregnancy failure. Transvaginal ultrasound show shows an Intrauterine pregnancy with an embryo of crown lump length 1.1 cm corresponding to 7 weeks, 2 days. And in the second image, the no fetal heart rate was identified compatible with intrauterine embryonic fetal device demise. So, the first semester abnormalities, uh, the first semester TVS is usually performed in patient presenting with bleeding and poor abdominal pain. Once the pregnancy is established by urine or sedum uh, beta C level, the TVS is done for these patients to evaluate whether pregnancy is intrauterine or extrauterine to know the gestational age, to confirm the viability, to diagnose any hydrity from mall, to uh, look for pregnancy associated with IUCDs. And uh, this uh, first semester TVS in this patient helps in prompt management and health detection of an embryonic pregnancies and evaluation of suspected threatened incomplete complete or missed abortions. So this is a T uh, TVS of an irregularly shaped empty gestational sac or mean sac diameter to eight weeks two days without any fetal pole consistent with the diagnosis of an embryonic pregnancy. Once the intrauterine pregnancy is identified, the viability and the presence of absence of abnormal feature must be evaluated. The timeline for the visualization of gestational sac, yolk sac, and embryo are 5, 5.5, and 6 weeks respectively and are accurate and consistent. Deviation from the normal chronological appearance of these structures are highly suspicious for pregnancy failure. The Society of Radiologists has uh, presented specific guidelines for diagnosing pregnancy failure based on certain characteristics, namely CRL by which the embryonic heart rate must be identified is 7 mm. The mean sac diameter by which an embryo should be identified is 25 mm. The absence of an embryo in two consecutive ultrasound exams separated by a fixed time interval. In addition, other findings including empty amnion sac, sign a yolk sac greater than 7 mm and a disproportionately small gestation sac are highly suspicious for pregnancy failure. So this is a trans abdominal ultrasound in a 34 year old woman with a positive beta HCG and vaginal bleeding demonstrate intrauterine gestation with a mean sac diameter of 23 mm and a yolk sac diameter of 19 mm. No definite fetal pole was identified. Instead, an amorphous embryonic structure uh, was identified. These findings are suspicious for, but not diagnostic for pregnancy failure. So, what is diagnostic for pregnancy failure is that absence of fetal cardiac activity with CRL more than 7 mm, absence of embryo if the MSD is more than 25 mm, 25 mm and absence of embryo in two consecutive uh, exams separated by a specific timeline, non-visualization of embryo with fetal heart rate two weeks after identification of gestational sac without yolk sac, non-visualization of an embryo with fetal heart rate, 11 or more days after identification of gestational sac with yolk sac. Subchorionic hematoma is relatively a common finding in the first semester and has been reported to occur in 18 to 22 per percent in intrauterine pregnancies. On transvaginal ultrasound, subchorionic hematoma appears as a crescent-shaped heterogeneous avascular collection between the gestational sac and, between, and the deciduous vesalis. Large subcarinic hematomas are associated with increased risk of pregnancy loss, especially if the hematoma is greater than two-thirds of the 
chorionic circumflex so this is the transvaginal ultrasound in a pregnant woman shows a gestational sac with an embryo and a heterogeneous subcorionic collection encircling approximately more than 81 80 degree of the gestational sac spontaneous abortion or miscarriage is clinically defined as a loss of pregnancy before 20th week of gestation or the expulsion of fetus weighing less than 500 g there are various types first threatened abortion refers to a clinical scenario in which the patient presents with vaginal spotting bleeding and cramping with a closed cervical os the pregnancy itself may appear normal or may demonstrate abnormal features poor prognostic factors include abnormal morphology example small or irregular gestational sac fetal bradycardia or a large subcorionic hematoma an inevitable abortion involves a similar clinical situation with vaginal bleeding and abdominal cramping but with an open cervical os on tvs the products of conception may be normally or abnormally positioned within the uterus or may protrude in the cervix so this is the transvaginal ultrasound of in a 41 year old woman with a known intrauterine pregnancy presenting with abnormal pain and vaginal spotting image 1 shows an intrauterine gestation with an intrauterine gestational sac with an open cervix so uh, there was no heart rate identified and on follow up ultrasound obtained the next day the gestational sac was seen in the cervical canal this is compatible with the diagnosis of inevitable abortion an incomplete abortion is a term used when the retained products of conception remains within the uterus after the passage of pregnancy this often appears as a heterogeneous collection of mass within the uterus while it may be avascular the presence of blood flow enables the diagnosis of the retained products a complete abortion is the cessation of the vaginal bleeding following the passage of pregnancy without retained products of conception lastly a missed abortion is a non viable pregnancy with a closed cervix and no clinical symptoms of miscarriage so this is a transvaginal uh, scan showing bulky uterus with an intrauterine ecogenic mass with multiple cystic spaces within uh, uh, with uh, giving a diagnosis of complete vesicular mole this is a uh, transvaginal ultrasound showing crumpled gestational sac in a lower uterine segment and an open internal os giving a diagnosis of inevitable abortion so this is a transvaginal gestation sac with fetal pole but with absent fetal cardiac activity giving a diagnosis of missed abortion so this is a transvaginal ultrasound of two patients with first semester bleeding showing heterogeneous endometrium eco complex so, uh, with vascularity suggestive of retained products of conception or incomplete abortion transvaginal ultrasound showing a gestation sac with no fetal poles with a subcorionic hematoma so this is the transvaginal ultrasound of a 32 year old female with a upt positive and 7 weeks of amenorrhea presenting in bleeding per vaginal showing a well defined heterogeneously hyperechoic ring with a ring like lesion in the right adnexa it shows a significant internal peripheral vascularity and the adjacent fallopian tube appears thickened these are the common sites for the ectopic pregnancies most common being the tubal ectopic so the results of my study in a total of number of 50 cases the most cases were of threatened abortion missed abortion and an embryonic pregnancy with the highest being the missed abortion 14 cases out of 50 so correlation of the number of cases based on ultrasound and the clinical diagnosis the uh, in my study the clinical diagnosis of uh, threatened abortion was made in 30 patients while the tvs confirmed the diagnosis of threatened abortion only in 11 giving the disparity of 19 so in my study the total out of 50 cases that there was disparity in among in 42 cases cases giving a disparity of 84% so this is the comparison of clinical and ultrasound diagnostic accuracy so cases which were difficult to diagnose clinically were well, diagnosed precisely on tvs so the majority of cases were of missed abortion followed by threatened abortion 10 cases were diagnosed as an embryonic pregnancy and none of these cases could be diagnosed as clinically 
as blighted ovum. This holds true with the study available. Of the four cases of ectopic pregnancy in the study, all were correctly diagnosed by ultrasound and were proved to be ectopic in laboratory. The results of my study correlate well with Roma Sof et al. and Neelam Bhargaj et al. and Mamantha Shivnapma et al. In a study done by Mamantha Shivnapma et al., the total number of disparities between the clinical and ultrasound diagnosis of the causes of bleeding in first trimester was 118 and the percentage of disparity was 71% while in my study total percentage of disparity was 84%. The disparity was more for threatened abortion and an embryonic pregnancy and vesicular mole. It was impossible to diagnose an embryonic pregnancy, molar pregnancy clinically. So transvaginal ultrasound has an advantage over clinical speculation and is a boon for obstetrician. So the conclusion, patients who come with chief complaints of bleeding per vagina in the first semester in the ops department are at high risk of abnormal pregnancy. They are suspected, subjected to various clinical lab in examination, but still obstetrician cannot come to a final diagnosis. Here, the transvaginal ultrasound helps them to come to an accurate diagnosis. It helps in the emergency management and prevents mismanagement of the cases. In my present study, the TVS has helped in establishing diagnosis in whom precise clinical diagnosis is difficult. So these are my references and thank you for your patience.